Hey, what is up guys? Gitarok here, welcome back to the Nikkei Goddess of Victory video. Finally, we got a new event incoming. This is going to be the exclusive Valentine's event. As you can see, new update, perfect mate. And we're going to feature three new characters, actually two, uh, my bad. Drake right here is just a costume. Uh, I do love Drake's uh, costume overall. This looks pretty good and she will be available in a pass later on. Uh, Privati is going to be a new character exclusive to this Valentine's event and Aid right here or AD. I don't know how you pronounce that exactly. Now, in case you guys are wondering, are these two characters must pull? Are they limited? They are not limited. They will be added to the standard banner later on. As you can see via these particular patch notes, there, it will be available in Ordinary Recruit after the event ends. Same goes for Priority as well. Will be added to the Ordinary Recruit after the banner goes away. So if you guys are worried, you know, uh, will they be limited or not? They're not. All right, so there's that. So let's first have a look at the trailer, give you guys a better context on what this event is all about. Welcome, Master. The Maid Cafe is now open for business. Damn, that's good. That's really this good looking. Magic spell, this dish will become more tasty. Oh, that's the uh, skill animation, the burst skill animation. Hello, my name is Aid, and I'll be at your service. All right. It would look so good with a costume. So we got Drake in the costume, as you can see. Very cool costume, I would say, right? Alright, obviously, we're gonna have a new story alongside with that. A mini game. Yeah, they're bringing that uh, for this particular event. So it looks like the mini game is similar to the Christmas mini game that we have played before. If you guys played it last year, I mean, not last year, two years ago, 2022, right? Uh, we're gonna have Crystal Chamber, which is a new boss that looks an event. insane. Alright, that new boss that we looks extremely, extremely crazy. Alright, so these two are the characters featured, as you guys can see. So let's talk a little bit more about, about this. So first things first, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the boss, Crystal Chamber, as you can see. This is going to be Solo Raid Season 10 boss information. So you can expect this boss to be... Uh, you know, you can expect the two new characters to somewhat be the counter of this boss. Ideally, that's going to be the way it is. But solo raids is something that, you know, you're going to need multiple teams. Pretty cool looking um, frame right there, right? I like the design overall. So uh, the mini game you guys briefly saw earlier is going to be pretty simple and straightforward. You just got to toggle uh, which plates go to the left and which plates go to the right. I think it's a very simple, straightforward uh, event. But this is going to give you some, uh, you know, some gems along the way, some keychains. And yeah, Valentine's Day special box times 5. Make sure this is something that you do every single day. I hope it's not too repetitive though. You know, based on my experience, uh, they did learn from their past uh, during the first Christmas event, it was quite repetitive. Now let's talk about the character then. So we got two characters going on. Privati, Unkind Mate. So if you guys are not aware, this is how she looks like. I do love her design, pretty cool. She's going to be a burst 3, Alishan. Okay, so it's been a while since Alishan faction actually got a good... Oh, she has a tail as well. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, so I'm so glad that Alishan is going to get, you know, like uh, in this case, hopefully a good damage dealer or a good DPS overall, right? So that's going to be how she attacks. And then we have one more 8 right here. So let's have a look. This is going to be for 8's animation. Uh, 8 is not going to be Alishan. She's going to be Tetra, right? So they are both in a different, both from a different faction based on the event last year because she was introduced in the event last year as well alongside with Kokua and Soda, right? But she was not featured right there and people are wondering how come you cannot obtain her? But now finally we have the answers. It looks like, you know, finally she will be playable. Now, are they worth pulling for though? Because you can see, you know, both of them are really, really cool. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this. Now in case you guys are wondering, Privati is going to come first. All right, Privati's banner will be there at February 5th uh, maintenance till February 22nd. Privatist banner is going to occur first and its banner is going to come slightly later at February 15th to February 29th. So let's talk about the skills. All right, so you guys have a better idea. Now, Privati is going to be a shotgun. Okay, as you can see, she's an attacker shotgun uh, from Alishan. And let's have a look at the skills and give you guys uh, an idea of what she can do. So skill one is passionate mate. Activates when landing attacks 30 times using pellets. Okay, very familiar concept with Leona. I'm sure you guys are aware of that. 
affects two enemy units nearest to the crosshair, uh, deals damage as additional damage. So two enemies. So that's not too bad, right? Uh, and she will be able to activate this as a passive. Now for skill 2, activates when more than 5 pallets hit with a single normal attack. That's pretty cool. Uh, this is going to affect self. She's going to reload faster, 20% reload speed for 2 seconds. Uh, when hitting 3 times using pallets during full burst time, she's going to reload 1 round. I do like that actually. All right, uh, Attack increased by 11% and stacks up to 5 times can last for 2 seconds. Holy, that sounds, that sounds insane. That sounds incredibly crazy. Attack increased by 11% and stacks up to 5 times. That means it can go up to 55% at least, right? Or even more, like 50, uh, more than that. Yeah, sure, it doesn't last that long. It only lasts for 2 seconds. But still, knowing that it can stack up that much, that is a lot of attack percent boost. Now, for the burst skill, uh, it is a 40 seconds cooldown. Effect self, increase attack damage and critical damage. And both last for 10 seconds and also 1000% of final attack multiplier. Wow, that is incredible. So far, I don't know, she looks pretty promising. All right, I don't want to like overhype her, uh, but so far based on what I see from the skills, it does seem like the damage is going to be there for sure. But will she be the best Elysian damage dealer? That's going to be something that we we'll, we need to find out. Actually, it's not that hard to basically beat that record because uh, I think right now the record is being held by Gulatin or Maybe D, right? Those are the two uh, Elation units that I can think of, Burst 3. Now let's talk about it then. She is a supporter, Burst 2, alright? And she's an Assault Rifle, Wind Element. Uh, Privity is going to be uh, Electric or Lightning, right? So she's going to be a little bit different. As you can see, her skill 1, Cleaning Time, alright? Gains debuff immunity to 1 debuff and stacks up to 1 time continuously. I thought that's pretty interesting. Debuff immunity, that means you are going to be, uh, you know, immune to a lot of things like stun, or you can't... I'm not sure if enemy grabbing you with the tentacles, like some raptures that can do that, will that be prevented entirely? But considering that this affects all allies and whenever you enter the battle, it's just insane. Alright, if you guys are struggling with Molonia boss specifically, where she can basically stun you if you don't defeat her core, uh, yeah, that's going to be one concept or one instance that you can take advantage of. Activates when own HP falls below 90%. Affects all allies, and everyone's attack increased by 5% of caster's attack. Buffs like this are going to be uh, a little bit difficult to pull off for a new player, right? Because when you see attack increased by 5% of the caster's attack, that means it scales off her attack. That means you gotta have good gears on her, right? Because the, the better your gears, the more that attack boost is going to be. Uh, even though this is going to be something that's uh, pretty interesting. But the activation condition here, when your own HP falls below 90%, it's a little bit weird in my humble opinion because what if you have a shield going on, right? But in this case, she's a burst 2, so we'll have to see can she compete with the other burst 2 characters uh, in, in that particular slot, right? Her skill 2 seems to be a healing skill, rest time, activates after 420 normal attack, and affects everyone, perfect mate, gain debuff immunity to 1 debuff and stack up to 1 time continuously. And then after attack 120 normal attacks, uh, what she will do is max HP increase of caster's max HP without restoring HP. And this is going to last for 5 seconds. I'm not a big fan of skills like this where it increases your max HP and it doesn't heal you up. Um, this could be good again for certain uh, characters that you don't want to heal them like Gulotin, right? For example, because she does rely on having the less HP she has, the more damage she can do. But other than that, most characters, ideally, you want to have the heal. That means you are going to need to bring another healer, right? So let's have a look at the burst skill first before I make that conclusion. Mill time affects all allies. Max HP increased by 25% of caster's max HP without restoring HP. And this is going to last for 10 seconds. And also increase attack by 10% of caster's attack for 10 seconds. Alright. So overall, she does have an ability that increases max HP, but she doesn't have the ability to heal allies. So first things first, I can think of uh, maybe if you're pairing her up with 2B, which does, you know, have a lot of, you know, damage that scales off HP, I can see she's going to be a very, very good pair with 2B overall. But other than that, right now, as of how I'm looking at this, it does feel like she might be a little bit of a struggle if you are building a team because you are going to need 
The truth is, a lot of healers, a lot of uh, supporters or healers, uh, characters that can heal are in Burst 2. At least the strong ones, right? The meta ones. Burst 1, we do have some. Rapunzel, uh, Pepper. Burst 3, we have Helm, right? But that means you gotta pair with those characters to be able to heal your, your allies constantly. Uh, you are fixated amongst those. So we'll see how strong her buffs are. Uh, I don't think... Yeah, I'm not too sure if this is gonna justify uh, using her over all the other characters available, right? So that's something that we'll definitely have to test out. But for now, I think Privity seems like a better pool personally. Alright, based on what I can see, based upon looking their skills, it does seem like Privity has a... You know, higher pool value based on what I can observe right now. But hey, that's just my opinion for now. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Alright, so that's going to be it for this video. I'm really, really excited for this particular uh, Nikkei's patch note. As always, subscribe if you guys haven't already. Give this video a like if you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. Goodbye. <music>